I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Number three, approval of minutes. Do I have any questions on A, January 9, 2014, B, January 22, 2014? Any motion to approve the minutes? Second. Ms. Vaughn, call the roll, please. Mr. Stradley? Yes. Mr. Hetty? Yes. Mr. Moylan? Yes. Mrs. Chandler? Yes. Chairman Dake? Yes. Okay, moving on to number four, public comment. If anyone from the public would like to stand to address the commission, come right up, please. Hi there. My name is Susan Meal, and I live here in the county. Um, I would have lots and lots of questions to ask because I have major, major concerns. But I'm just going to ask one question of this commission. I was at the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council's meeting in December when um, speakers of, about All Aboard Florida and also Tri-Rail out of Southeast Florida were discussed. And the tri-rail uh, plan is to expand and continue coming north. And the tri-rail people are studying uh, right now an expansion into Stewart, I think it is. And the person studying it, and by the way, the, tri uh, the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council board voted all in favor except one person to continue that study, even though they haven't mentioned one iota of information about how much it's going to cost the taxpayers. Um, and the woman discussing Tri-Rail and their studies, their preliminary studies, they're now moving on to more studies, mentioned that their future lies in going to Cocoa Beach. So while you're looking at the use of rail through this county, Unless they plan on building a large bridge overarching our county, the only way to get to Cocoa Beach, is my guess, is to come through this county as well. And they also run 30-some-odd trains a day now up from Miami. So my suggestion would be maybe that, and I don't know if this is the purview of your commission at this point, but if you are looking at rail through Indian River County, you might want to talk to those folks as well. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. before the speaker leaves, ma'am, ma'am, I, I just wanted to say thank you for pointing out that uh, the, uh, the vote without consideration of the cost, and unfortunately we see this happen at government uh, body after government body, and uh, I share your concern that before we vote yes for anything, we should know what the cost to you, the taxpayers, uh, what it is, and thanks for making that point. And on that point, let me just mention as a small business owner that the notion that All Aboard Florida is a private entity seems absurd to me because we in our company would never get the county to donate property like Miami and other places are that want to have those uh, business ventures where the stations are and we would never be able to go to the county the state or the federal government for loans or assistance like i'm guessing and also we would never have a business plan that has been shown over and over again to never be sustainable and to always lose money anyway thanks thank you thank you next please good afternoon my name is john Chapman, 2356 18th Avenue, Vero Beach. I'd like to hand these up. One for everybody. This, isn't, this is not about the trains themselves, but the noise they create. And now this is an ordinance been on any River County books since uh, December of 1990. And I want this to be also part of the consideration. We have a hell of a lot of noise from the trains, as is now, 2.30, 3.30 in the morning, when there's absolutely nobody on the road, and they 
lean on the horn. They don't just tap the horns. They lean on the horns. And I live within four blocks of the rail tracks, and I own my own home. And it's, it's every morning waking, being woken up. That's, that's my point. If, if, if you're thinking about adding this to our traffic, rail traffic in this town, this is also to be considered to be extra noise. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Chairman, Chairman. A, uh, question. Mr. Scott, yes. Question. Um, are you, did you say you were a resident of the county? A uh, resident of Vero Beach, yes. Because uh, I'm curious, do you know what the county's doing about? This is, this is a county ordinance. Um, right, but do you know what the, do you know, have any information on what the county's doing about the uh, quiet zone? No, I do not. I have not been to, um, since I bought the house, I've not had a chance to go to a county meeting. Oh, thank you. I plan on doing so in the future. Another point, sir, um, with respect to the noise, I think that the city of Vera Beach has a noise ordinance. And if my understanding of the current noise ordinance is correct, the planned uh, whistle on the train exceeds the allowable limits. So I think that there's a there's a problem with with their plan meeting current codes mm -hmm. well i've also noticed in the, the one year that i've in, owned my own home on 18th avenue there's only been one train that's gone through that did not blow its horn at all and that was at 2 30 morning so that's one out of a whole year of trains thank okay. you very much thank you very much sir next please Good afternoon, my name is Joseph Cofanti, and I live in the city of Vero Beach. There's a, uh, <clears throat> this is a question of money, but there's something more important than that. I view it as a matter of life and death. And I'm going to give you some information. I'm sorry I can't hand it out to you because I don't have the time to do that kind of thing. Between the years 2006 and 2012, there were 260 Transpass, transpassers killed in Florida on the railroad. They're not, it's not a vehicle, they're pedestrians. 260 in the state of Florida in those um, six years. Uh, 44 by walking on the tracks, about half they were lying, sleeping, or standing on the tracks. The article didn't say what time of day or night these mishaps occurred. Uh, I got this from the News Channel 5, their website, Monday 2, 3, 14, which happens to be today, fortuitously. So 200 and and uh, 240, I believe I said, 260 deaths. <clears throat> now, I know for a fact that the Amtrak train runs up and down the East Coast reaching 80 miles an hour, okay, or some other places in the country. I know it reaches 80 miles an hour because I have a Garmin in it. That's what it tells me. So I'm not speculating. I know it's 80 miles an hour. Uh, these trains are going to run 100. Most of the trains in, in, in Florida run around 50 miles an hour. At least they go through Vero Beach around 50 miles an hour. And I know that because they go slightly faster than 45 miles an hour when I'm doing the speed limit on US-1. I say that, you know what I mean. I keep, I can't say I keep up with them, but maybe I do. I don't. <clears throat> And so these trains are going to travel twice as fast. The, uh, I was unable to get this information, how many deaths in Indian River County. Well, I've been here for over 35 years. I hope I'm not boring you. I hope you find this interesting or information. I've been here for over 35 years. I would guess, put money on it, that if I were a betting person, I'd put money on it that at least 15 people have died, pedestrians have died 
in Indian River County. That includes Vero Beach. And they, they're pedestrians I'm talking about, not vehicles. I don't know of many or any vehicles that have been smacked by trains. Most of these, I'm sure there have been, but I'm not, but most of these deaths or all of the ones that I'm familiar with are, have been pedestrians. And from a personal experience, I've been on a, by a railroad track in, here in Indian River County doing my, my business. And I looked up and I heard a train. I don't think it was like 15 feet away from me and I was 15 feet back from the tracks before I saw that train. It was and it was going 40, 50 miles an hour, whatever it was. I don't know. I guess they weren't blowing the horn. Now here's a couple other considerations. So these trains come upon you. Uh, you look and see a light way at, way down the road, uh, the, the on the engine, and you have really no idea how fast that's coming. You don't have an idea. Uh, I'm talking about I'm not talking about the money. I'm talking about the lights and the death and the, the, the however they're proposed to make the crossings, the travel through Indian River County safe. So here's a couple other um, things I think you should look at. I would look at the financial condition of the company that's proposing this, what, what their relationship is with the FEC. I, I'm not quite sure what it is, it's whether it's a separate private corporation or whether it's a public corporation, which I don't think it is, and whether or not it's a partnership with the Florida East Coast. And how, if it's not, how did they get a relationship going with Florida East Coast? That's what I would, I would look into. Uh, I don't have the time to do that, so. But I think it's uh, uh, obligatory for you to do so. Uh, I would also look at the covenant that the railroad has with respect to the right-of-way, whether or not they own the property, whether they just have a right-of-way. And if this right-of-way uh, can be conveyed to another entity, in other words, Florida East Coast has a right to go up and down these, these tracks here, and they may own them or own the property, but do they have the right to convey their right-of-way to another entity? if in fact that's what they are attempting to do. And that would, you'd have to look at the covenant and the agreements and the, whatever they have with the state, <clears throat> excuse me, with the state of Florida. The, the question already came up as far as the county with respect to their quiet zone. And suppose the county says that we're not gonna spend the money for the quiet zone, we're gonna let the whistles, whistles blow. And they're gonna blow between six in the morning or seven and at nine o'clock at night. In order for them to allow, uh, to have a whistle blowing, they're gonna to have to, the engine is gonna to have to be in the city of Vero Beach to effect a noise where the county says that the whistle is necessary. So you're gonna to have to be blowing the whistle in the city of Vero Beach to take care of the county if the county doesn't go along. The same thing is applicable to the county with respect to the two other counties, the north and south. Who's, where is it going? I mean, where, you, you, I think you understand, uh, understand. I hope I hope I express myself well there. And um, the other thing is that the, what concerns me is they, there must be a distance be t before the crossing that the horn, the whistle must go on. They must blow the whistle. There must be some distance. Let's say it's 100 yards, maybe 500 yards. I don't know what it is, but let's say it's 100, yard let's say it's 100 yards. Since the train is going twice as fast, I would imagine that the distance would have to be twice as much. So now you're talking about 200 yards. Now the whistle is blowing back, blowing twice as far away from the intersection. Is the 
volume, the amplitude of the whistle going to have to be increased to cover so that people at that intersection can be uh, can hear it. So that's, a th that's some of the questions that I think you should have answered. Uh, I really, I'm, I don't care if they put the train through or not. That's not my concern. My concern is that if they don't blow the whistle, there's going to be a lot more people killed by a speeding train going 100 miles an hour through even 80 miles an hour through city of Vero Beach. I think that you should consider that. I don't know how much money it's going to cost to put make it a quiet zone, but I think that quiet zone is going to benefit the crossings, the, the automobile and truck cro vehicle crossings. It will have no effect on the pedestrians who try to cross, as it were, in the middle of the block. So I think you have to, this is a serious situation, and I think you people realize that, or at least I hope you do. And I be very, very careful, because I think it's not a question of money, more so than it's a matter of life and death. Right? Thank you for listening to me patiently. Thank you very much. It. Mr. Next Chairman, please. may I ask him some right Mr. Chairman. Yes. Mr. Gafanti, uh, I, I think that your question on financial condition is, is a good one. And I would ask uh, Mr. Roberts, could you provide to the uh, city clerk uh, before our next meeting some financial analysis documents um, of your, your proposal to the city clerk so that she can distribute them to both the, uh, uh, the commission members and the, for the public to access? Uh, if you don't mind, Mr. Hetty, he's got he's on the agenda. Could you bring that question up at the time? Because we others of us may have questions. That's of him, that's that's, okay. that's fine, and Thank I'll you. have the same question uh, in answer to your question, Mr. Gafanti, on the uh, relationship with uh, uh, FEC. That uh, Mr. Roberts should be able to give us the uh, the document showing the relationship between All Aboard Florida and FEC, so that he knows. And the other thing, Mr. Gofanti, I think that Tammy has the um, license agreements, which will answer your questions on the right of way. Thank you. Next, please. Thank you very much. Uh, Mark Mutcher, 617 Indian Lilac Road. Uh, as you are all probably painfully aware, I normally get up here and blabber on extemporaneously, but um, I... There was an editorial about this in the Press Journal the other day, and I wrote a comment on uh, T.C. Palm uh, in response to that editorial, and I think I'd like to read and paraphrase it because I think it might be more uh, or better organized. Um, in summary, I, th I think you're probably all, what, what do we call this, putting the cart before the horse, or um, I, I, I'd like to pretty much start from, from ground zero on this. Um, well, let me start reading this, and then, then maybe we can have some discussion. But uh, I, I told the editorial, uh, the editorial board, I think that this editorial, as most do, misses the point completely. And, and I'll go on to explain. All, all this discussion we've been having makes the invalid assumption, at least in my mind, that All Aboard Florida is going to be a going, blowing success. In other words, um, what they're telling the governments, that including you, that you will save money by um, installing these quiet zones um, the in the fall of this year, and yet the first scheduled train won't be for at least a year after that. Um, the co and the cost of these uh, quiet zones, uh, unless it's been revised, or the, the rough cost, is $3 million for our, our tiny little town. And we've got 15,000 re residents, men, women, and children, and that works out to $200 a piece for each and every resident of, of this city. Um, but wait, what if this never happens? What if 
we install all these quiet zones and spend $3 million, and the first train, never, uh, the train never runs. The, the project gets canceled in that year or year and a half between the time that these improvements are made and the first train is scheduled to run. Or conversely, you know, maybe the first train does run and it runs for a few weeks or a few months, and they find out that it's empty, nobody's on it, or there aren't enough people on it to uh, justify even the operating costs, let alone the, the capital costs they've already spent on the thing. And, um, uh, and, and they cease operation, but we've still got our $3 million quiet zone. Um, so the cities up and down the east coast of Florida, in, are effect, in effect, are gambling on the fact that this is going to be a great success and, and all these trains are going to run and um, you're going to have, um, you know, all this, all this quiet operation. Now, what the article, or what the editorial said and what you guys have been saying is get the state to pay. Then the state would be making the same gamble um, with maybe not three million dollars, but maybe half a billion dollars, if you take all the crossings up and down, up and down the East Coast. Now I know this doesn't apply between Cocoa and Orlando. There are no crossings, as I understand. But uh, you know, the, the state's going to be making the same kind of gamble with uh, a huge amount of money, and that's our money too, believe it or not. So. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm not interested in spending $200 not to hear a horn, even ignoring the safety issues that uh, uh, that Buzzy Gafani just talked about. Uh, you, you, it may not be good not to have a horn, but uh, you know it's it's going to cost each and every one of us a, a whole lot of money. Um, so, I, I, as in summary, I would imagine that if I'm cor correct, there would be a huge effort to at least, at least figuratively lynch any government official, elected or appointed, who supported this gamble. And um, that's, that's what I wanted to say. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a pure gamble that this thing's ever going to get off the ground, but within six months or so, you're about to make a commitment to build these quiet zones. And um, I, it, I guess my recommendation would, let, let's see, let's hold off and wait, even if, even if it costs a little bit more to do it later. Let's uh, see if it, one, if it does go, and two, how objectionable the horns are, and Three, the experience from other cities that maybe do want to make this gamble and, in my mind, jump the gun, uh, see how that works out for somebody else before uh, we start throwing money at this issue that may or may not even happen or may or may not be a problem. So that's what I wanted to say. Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Mutcher, uh, the $200 that you point out, that's just the initial capital cost. That uh, doesn't take into account the continuing cost of maintenance of those things. And other than the comment on lynching any of the, uh, yeah, the elected officials, I, I would agree with most of the other comments, but uh, I'll hold off on the lynching. All right, thanks. Joseph Gafanti, uh, resident of the city of Fair Beach. Thank you, Chairman, sir. I just wanted to say that I, since Mark Mutcher brought up the newspaper, or one of them, I would ask you to uh, approach this subject uh, objectively and not rely on the palaver and the malarkey that's printed in the press. Do your own critical thinking and don't summarily uh, go along with what these people have to say which don't know any more than anybody else. So I ask you to do that. Don't rely, don't think that the, the, uh, the papers are doing you a favor by uh, giving you direction. You know, Orwell said that the public will believe what the media tells, says it, believes. So you don't want to get caught in that. I thank you for allowing me to come back up. Thank you, sir.
Anyone else from the public? No? Okay. I'll close this portion of the meeting. Public comment. All right, under number five, Chairman's Matters. I have a uh, working list of what we've been going over that's part of the agenda and for public record. Uh, all the members up here have it. Um, I gave the Commission some information on a quiet zone article. It was 121.14. Uh, we had some questions uh, on offense, and that hasn't been answered yet. Uh, we did discuss at the last meeting what the speeds may be that will be going through the city of Vero Beach. Uh, all of you, I think, got some information on the sounds of train horns. I sent that to you all. hope you all got it, and I'm sure you did, Ms. Fox, real good about sending the stuff out. Number five that we'll probably address at the next meeting is railroad company to let us know where they are with the environmental study. And if Mr. Roberts doesn't have a copy of these, I hope he gets them. Uh, also, uh, one of our commissioners uh, had a, 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 uh, an idea. Has anyone considered elevating the railroad uh, above the crossings? And then number seven, work with the state and county on their crossings. Do they want quiet zones? Uh, we have a total of eight. Two we have to seek permission on. Uh, one is a county right away, and, and the other is a DOT. Also, number eight, and we're going to be discussing some of that today, who will do the design work if we move, if the city council moves forward to, to look at doing some quiet zones? Who pays for the design work? We're going to find that out today. And we're also going to find out number 10, Mr. Roberts was to go back to his company and ask about the design, uh, if they would help the city with the cost, and he'll have an answer for us today. And we had some speed charts. They have become available to us. It's all part of this uh, record up here. It's all there for the public to take a look at. Uh, number 13, Mr. Roberts will bring back to the commission how many times the trains will be uh, coming across our crossings. Then we have our dates. Also, I have uh, underneath me that you folks don't have, and I'll ask Mrs. Vock to get copies to you before you all leave, is a number of news articles that's taking place throughout the state concerning uh, quiet zones and also with the trains coming through their community. So you may find these articles of interest. I have a whole bunch of them for you. <coughs> also, uh, part of your agenda packet, I have all the license agreements that we have here in the city of Vero Beach. I think we have one here that goes back to 1933, I think, uh, quite old. Uh, the railroad agreements, uh, you should, if you have the time, please take time to read each one. There's a little bit of different things that take place. But essentially, the thread through all the agreements that anything that happens at those crossings that the railroad people need uh, for safety reasons and all the above, uh, the city of Vero Beach is responsible for paying for it. It's very clear in the agreements, and they go way back. And we uh, heard today that there are people concerned with spending tax dollars to continue to look into this. Uh, what, what we're going to try to do here is to be ready. Uh, in the event that this train does come through, we have to be set up, have everything in place to do the quiet zones. Now, when you look for money at the state, uh, the state doesn't release any funds unless there's a need for it. But we have to be ready to go. It takes quite a bit of time to do all of this. We don't have that much time, and you're going to hear about that today where the time frame has actually been collapsed down. Uh, there was a memo that Mr. Roberts sent to our city manager that you all got, and you noticed in there the time has, it's, it's pretty tight. So with that being said, um, I'd like to move right into having Mr. Roberts come up to address us, and while he's coming up, uh, Mrs. Kim Delaney is listed on our agenda, but she could not make it today. She had other things that she needed to work on. Hopefully our next meeting she'll be here. You have the floor, Mr. Roberts. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> when I was here last week, uh, you uh, asked uh, several specific questions, which you just outlined most of them, and uh, I said I would come back and uh, provide answers uh, to this commission as best as that I'm able to do so. Uh, so I'll kind of go through them and give you uh, give you my response, and then we can uh, we can go from there if you have any further questions. Uh, one of the questions had to do with fencing and. Um, asked if will we be putting up a fence in Vero Beach and what kind of fence. Uh, my response to that, and I think I mentioned uh, this at the, the last hearing, 
was that all aboard Florida is working with Florida DOT and the Federal Railroad Administration on a safety plan that will include fencing in selected areas of the corridor. corridor. I can't tell you right now where that would be in the city of Vero Beach, but there will be fencing in, in uh, quite a few places in the corridor that uh, assist us with the safety concerns that we have and, and that respond to FRA and FDOT safety concerns. So as these decisions are made, <clears throat> the local governments will be notified, uh, and uh, All Aboard Florida will pay for uh, the installation of all the fencing. Um, in terms of a kind of offense, I, I, I can't tell you what kind it will be. Safety is our main concern. So uh, that is what we'll be looking at to, to uh, make sure that the corridor is safe and that it, measures are taken to prevent people from trespassing and getting in harm's way uh, when a train is going by. Um, I am told that we would be happy to discuss a cooperative approach with the cities and counties as we go through in terms of the, uh, the types of trains uh, that that uh, we're going to be putting up. But again, the focus uh, from our standpoint is safety first. And after, after that, uh, we're certainly willing to discuss other issues that the cities and counties may have. I was asked if we could provide cost estimates on the, uh, the estimates on the cost required zones. And I think I've, we've addressed this partially, but I will address it again that, uh, as you know, cost to uh, uh, upgrade crossings vary by location. So uh, I cannot and, and would not attempt to provide an estimate without having some sort of engineering uh, activity to, to go behind that, to, to back that up. Uh, we thought we were going to have a crossing uh, quiet zone discussion today with Ms. Delaney, so hopefully we'll get to the next meeting on, on, uh, on that one and she can go into further details. I was asked whether uh, Florida East Coast Railroad or All Aboard Florida be willing to have our own engineers do a quiet zone study to reduce the overall cost and bill the city for the quiet zone portion of the study. All Aboard Florida is not able to include any additional work related to design and application for quiet zones to our engineer comp engineering company's scope of work. All Aboard Florida is open to adding additional work orders to its construction contracts to create quiet zones. But as we have uh, noted here before, that that window continues to, to close as time goes on. The municipalities, counties, and public authorities that do apply for quiet zones are responsible for funding the additional scope of work as it relates to the design, the application process, and the construction of quiet zones. That is a Federal Railroad Administration process, and I refer you to the Federal Railroad Administration website, fra.dot.gov, that discusses quiet zones. Are passenger trains or horns different than freight? We discussed this, was asked of me, and I think you've sort of answered it, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, I, I was asked to bring a recording in, and that probably would not make sense in this room, couldn't adequately uh, demonstrate the sound of the train, but you should know that federal guidelines, guidelines do set the minimum level for locomotive horns. That is in the FRA guidelines on the website. Um, but uh, a passenger train horn and a freight train is the same. Uh, passenger trains, however, do have a significantly quieter operational profile altogether uh, than freight trains. <clears throat> they are lighter, they're faster, and they operate in a higher class of track. And by that, I mean these tracks are being upgraded to a, to, uh, for a higher level of operation that they currently are under freight. I was asked whether uh, All Aboard Florida would consider elevating tracks uh, through the city. Uh, Florida East Coast Railway... Uh, in addition to the All Aboard Florida service, will continue to provide freight service to customers along this corridor. So elevating the tracks at any one point is not possible or practical. Uh, due to the heavy weight and length of a freight train, they are not able to operate on any uphill grade that goes beyond one degree. So if that were the case, you might have a train start to fall backwards. Uh, to achieve such a gradual increase in track height, the track elevation would necessarily cause that, and again, we'd have to start elevating that track way before we get to the city of Vero Beach. That would necessarily cause a lot of roads to be closed just as it slowly, slowly gets higher, and, and you would not be able to, to, to go under those roads. So those roads would be impassable and effectively close all the traffic, uh, those roads to all traffic. 
Uh, the option does exist for grade separation projects to occur in the future that would allow the road to be elevated over the rail corridor. And the city or the county has the option, or the state, has the option of elevating streets over the tracks. That has been done in, in various places, and it, it can be done depending on the location and what kind of design uh, that uh, you would have to do. I was asked to confirm the, sp the planned speed of the train through Vero Beach, and that, that speed is, uh, uh, we mentioned 110 miles an hour, which, uh, and, and that would be the speed we would be traveling through, through Vero Beach. Um, you asked about EIS, I think, Chairman. I didn't have in my notes uh, the EIS process, but um, that process is under underway. Uh, we are uh, at the uh, end stage of the EIS process. We'll be coming out with a draft environmental impact statement uh, in a few months. We'll be doing another round of public uh, input meetings. Uh, the, the cities and counties will be notified as to the dates and times and locations of those meetings where the public will, will be able to come in and weigh, uh, weigh in on the project. Was there another question I was supposed to answer that I did not get to? <clears throat> financial analysis for the, the citizen asked if there was any financial analysis that you could provide to us that would show, you know, your, your total uh, expected cost, where you are, how, how much, you know, of that have you, do you have, what kind of backing do you have, what do you have yeah. in terms of financial documents that would uh, is Mr. Milcher's uh, concern that uh, that you're a viable enough organization to actually uh, pull this off, have money to do it, and have some reserves? What what can you give us in terms of financial documentation? Sure. Let me address this other question, too, about the relationship between the companies. Florida East Coast Railway and All Aboard Florida are sister companies. We are under the same ownership. Uh, we have exclusive rights to operate passenger rail on the Florida East Coast railway tracks. Florida East, uh, All Aboard Florida and Florida East Coast Railway are private companies. Uh, this is a privately funded project. Uh, our, <coughs> our financial <coughs> statements are not required to be publicly disclosed, disclosed. And you're not willing to do that? Not at this time, sir, but I'll certainly uh, take your question back to uh, the company. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, other questions? Go right ahead. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Thank you. While well, Mr. Roberts is here, my concern is growing that we may be talking a lot about the quiet zones, but I think we are equally charged with making sure that um, that the city who would have, if, if and in fact this is not a designated corridor for fencing, that we really look at what we're going to do or suggest to the city commission regarding fencing. And that comes in, in two issues. One, it comes as a financial burden, um, but also there's a, a an implementation burden. Um, if the city does not fall into the required fencing, as Mr. Roberts has pointed out, that many places in the corridor will, but likely equally, if not more, will fall out of the requirement for FAC and um, the Florida Department of Transportation to implement fencing, um, I think it's a burden and a charge of this committee to make sure that we can make a recommendation to the city if we believe that fencing is required anywhere, if not through the whole city. However, the issue is, is that the city does not own the property adjacent to all areas of the corridor or the right of way which FEC <laughs> occupies through this area. And therefore, we would be either dependent on private property to allow us to put a fence up or more likely to ask FEC if we can place a fence on their property, which in today's world means legal documents and agreements. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we do need to be prepared if we're going to make that recommendation to the city to also address the need to do that and do that again. Fencing is not something that takes huge engineering requirements and it takes a couple people to decide really what they want the fence to look like and what it's going to cost and then the building of it, but the legal documents to, 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 to allow us to burden FEC's right of way may be a little bit different. Um, and I, I know that um, this is something that is a great concern to me. I, I, I frankly, my initial belief and continued belief is that quiet zones may not be in the best interest of the cities of Vero Beach for cost and also more so for safety. But I do believe there are safety concerns that we need to address, and I think those need to be addressed through fencing. Understood. Anyone else? Ma'am? Um, Mr. Roberts, is that something you can go back to the company and inquire about? 
Yes, I, I think uh, Mr. Moylan makes a great suggestion, and, and I just want to reiterate what I said before, that, that we want to work in a cooperative uh, fashion with, with the municipalities they're going through. So uh, I think that's a discussion that uh, the Audible Board Florida team and the city of Vera Beach would very much uh, agree to, uh, to have to sit down and discuss. Uh, again, once we our, our, our final uh, safety uh, plans are known, uh, to share them with the city, get feedback, and if there's additional concerns that the city has, uh, we would want to work with the, uh, the city on that. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Hedy? Yeah, with respect to fencing, too, uh, there, there are some fencing methods that, uh, that could be used that would do two things. Not only would they provide fencing, but they would provide noise barriers. <clears throat> So there's ways where the fencing, if that's the decision, there's ways of doing the fencing that could also provide for noise abatement. Mr. Stradley? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I also uh, just want to come back and ask a couple questions about the, uh, the horns. As I, as I understand it, there's going to be four blasts approaching each intersection. Uh, one long, two shorts, one long? Three blasts. Two three. long, one short, one long. Okay, three blasts. Um, how is that going to work when we have intersections that are 400 feet apart and it's supposed to start a quarter mile before? Is it, again, I, my concern is they'll just be on the horn from the time. I mean, it takes a – I think it, we're looking at an estimate at about a minute and a half to get – for the train to get through the city, and you said it's 30 seconds for the gates to go up and down, so maybe another minute on one side or the other um, mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. um, as what are, what are they going to do when they have to blow the horn three times a quarter mile before an intersection and a quarter mile before an intersection that's 400 feet down the track, which is a matter of seconds? <laughs> That's a good question. So, so the, the engineer is required to blow the horn uh, within a quarter of a mile. Um, so if the, your crossings are that, that close, um, the people at crossing A is still going to hear the same horn that people at crossing B are hearing. So uh, you, they do have a flexibility. The engineers do have flexibility uh, with the horn. The, the specifics regulations do not say how long a long <clears throat> means. It doesn't define long, doesn't define short. Okay, so, so the engineers have a little discretion in how they sound those horns, and obviously when they're, when they're that close together, I think you can assume that, uh, that uh, in some cases you're going to have additional, you may have what you would characterize as double the number of soundings, but I would not, I would not say that that happens all the time. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> um, I'm also concerned about the safety issues and whether or not we need the horns for safety issues. We have a, um, a lot of bars and restaurants in Main Street uh, right next to the tracks. Um, and we're encouraging pedestrian you know, activities there. And um, So it's not just, I'm not just concerned about cars going through intersections, but, but people walking around and people having had a good time, um, which tends to sometimes impair their judgment. Yes. Um, so um, I, I'm concerned about concerned about that. I think, um, Mr. Chairman, the, our decision tree should run. Do we want a, to be a quiet zone first? And then if we want to be a quiet zone, there's the other questions come along after that. Um, I think we need to address that first. And um, the, I think that the, uh, I would find it very hard to believe that the railroad would not want to fence through an urban area. Um, it's their liability. Um, it's our citizens. So, so we have, both have an interest in that. And I, I think our, uh, it's, for us, it's not about money. Um, it's about our people. And that's very, very important. But, um, you know, I think that uh, it does need to be fenced, very definitely. Um, I'm curious as to what the county is going to do. Um, 
and uh, if the county's even been considering doing the quiet zone um, going forward. So these are these are my concerns. I am, I, as I say, concerned about um, pedestrian traffic. I'm concerned about safety. Um, and I think, as Mr. Gafonte alluded to, at night, you see a light down the track. You don't know really how far away it is. And we're used to 45, 50 mile an hour trains, and these trains are coming twice as fast. Um, and I can, you know, I can just imagine people trying to beat the train and not realizing that, you know, it's just a matter of seconds from the time that they see the light and the gates go down until the train's there. So um, that would be. Those are my concerns and my. Thank you, Mr. Stradley. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. uh, piggybacking on uh, Mr. Stradley's uh, questions, and maybe we can get an answer to the citizens' question: If the if the county, you, know, you don't know, we don't know what the county's going to do. If the county opted out of any quiet zones, and the city said we wanted quiet zones, is Mr. Gafanti isn't Mr. Gafanti correct in saying that? Even if we were in a quiet zone, in order for you to blow the horns according to federal regulations to warn the first county crossing, you'd have to be blowing the horn in the city limits whether we had a quiet zone or not. If it's within a quarter mile, yes, sir. Yeah. And it's a few blocks. Well, to the south it is within a few blocks. The north, from aviation to... Uh, Aviation, which is 30, what? Um, Monty, help. Well, I'm looking here at the map. 30 and we, 41st we have, would be the first county. Correct. And it's 3,400 feet to 37th uh, from Aviation. So they, they would have, they, they would be blowing the horn around the airport. And, and then the... And then the same uh, going south, the last city... Um, intersection is uh, at State Road 60. The first county is 16th, 17th Street. Well, I think the county, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but the county's required, maintains 16th Street. That's in the city limits. So the first one in the county would be 12th Street. And that, I'm, okay, well, I, I, my understanding no. from what the city manager told us that the county is, is responsible for that 16th Street crossing. So that would be a county crossing. Yes, sir, it is a county crossing. But if the county, if we choose to put uh, quiet zones throughout the city, I'm sure the county would relinquish that cost to us pretty quickly. <laughs> you think they'd let us pay the bill? I haven't known them that long, Brian, but yes. Come on. Yeah, I think that, I think the, they the way the county treats you, sir, come on. They're always trying to give you things, aren't they? No, they aren't, are they? They're, they're, they're really, you're right. You're they're right. Like, Don't get yeah. him in trouble, Brian. No, no. I mean, I, I'm agreeing with him. I, I, I think he's, I think he's right. The, the county would relinquish the cost to us. Yeah. As the state would rel relinquish the cost of. Yeah, we could get the city of Vero Beach to pay to do the whole thing. Yeah, because I, I, I don't think the state of Florida was going to designate the state as a quiet zone, so 60 would probably fall as our burden as well. Thank you, Mr. City Manager. Any other comments on this? Because I wanted to uh, share some of my thoughts. Okay. Um, we heard quite a bit, and uh, we're up to the point now on the quiet zones. We've, we've talked about fencing. And with all these items, they're time sensitive. And if we're going to do anything at all as a city, we have to be ready to go. And as I said before, um, as this rolls on out, if none of it happens, the state is not going to divvy up any funds for us to do anything because nothing's happening. But we have to have everything in place and be ready to go. Um, I have a motion here for the uh, quiet zones and some of the uh, language that I have in my motion I pulled from a memo for backup material that came into our city, um, city manager, Mr. Jim O'Connor, on Thursday, January 30th, 2014, 9, 28 p.m. And he here's my motion on the following. And after, uh, after we get through with this, I'm going to ask Mr. Warren to go into doing something with your fence project, okay? 
According to the email dated 1-30-2014, Mr. Roberts writes, We have been informed that the lead engineers and project managers at HNTB have said no to taking a lead on the Quiet Zone application and design. We are also told by the N, as it were, HNTB project manager that the window for joint cooperation for crossing work is closing fast. That much of the project's infrastructure related to crossing design work is already done with only specific safety-related components left to be finalized in their up, up, upcoming diagnostics. We are told there is additional reluctance due to the project's team already stre stretched workload and potentially complicated invoicing. We are told that when the city applies for quiet zones, the city is responsible for the funding of such and has to, has to identify the funding. We have to let the folks know where we're getting the monies from. We are also told All Aboard Florida is open to adding additional work orders to its construction contracts for the installation of quiet zones to more efficiently manage when required construction. But that is becoming less of an option as AAB starts transforming from design to contracting. So you can see here from the paperwork that Mr. Roberts sent to our city manager Time is closing fast on us for us to do anything at all. Now, the state is aware of cities coming before them asking for help for monies for the trains that are coming through their cities. Um, so we need to be in line. So with that being said, one other quick thing here. The High Speed Rail Commission, nor city staff, is not compromised of who the city needs to use to accomplish the task at hand. Therefore, I make a motion to recommend to the city council that they put out an RFP to hire an engineer to study and present costs for the design and implementation of quiet zones within the city limits, and as such, and that we use Trans System, who works for HNTB slash AAF. This is the company uh, in, in the correspondence that the city manager got that the train people are working with. So with that being said, we just as a city can't run out and hire whoever we feel like. Uh, the train company needs to have an approved, they need to approve the engineering firm. So this firm is already working with them, and if I understand correctly, they're also doing some work in the county now. If, Mr. Roberts, if you want to correct me on anything, feel free. So that is my motion. I need a second to move it forward. I'll second. Under discussion. Um, is that, Mr. Roberts, is that true that you have to, we have to use this engineer, engineering firm? No, you don't have to use that engineering firm. You can use any firm you want. Um, and if we, can we do an R, I think if we do an RFP and we limit it to one particular firm, it's not really an RFP. Um, Good point. <laughs> uh, just as a comment, a couple comments. One, uh, if we do an RFP that opens it up to anyone, we just have to find qualifications for different firms. This is not a sole source engineering project. The second thing is that I, for you all to take into consideration before we go out and hire a consultant or an engineer or anyone else, there is a possibility based on some information I've read, and Rusty, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that some of the designs they're going to be doing for these safety features already are going to be qualified for quiet zones because of we're in an urban area and uh, some of our crossings may qualify for that. So I'd hate to go out and design engineering and have an engineering study for all of our crossings and come to find out that five of them, as an example, would already qualify without any needs for engineering. Uh, I, I just I hate engineering something that we don't really understand is my concern, Mr. Chairman. I, and I think that's what we're sort of doing here in the fact that I'm not sure we all totally understand quiet zones. We do understand we have horns from freight trains coming through right now. And, but the, the, um, the safety concerns being brought up is one thing, but the other thing is, is how much of a real nuisance will this actually be, and then how do we need to respond to that? And, and okay. I, just as a suggestion, I'm just not sure that hiring an engineering firm without knowing what we're engineering. Don't go yet. With, with <laughs> that being said, I hear you loud and clear. What, we, what would we do for a backup plan? Because in, in the memo, you know, there's these time constraints. 
what's your recommendation as far as a window of time that we have time to work with this, then make a, f a decision down the road? Because it says right here, you know, they're ready to go. And if we don't have our ducks in order, we kind of lose. So what is your recommendation for a backup plan? Mine is, as opposed to risking money for the engineering study, I prefer to risk the money at, that it will cost us additional to redesign a portion yes. of the crossings. Because if we go out and do the engineering, and, and I, I think what, we, what your intent is is to try to shoot for when they start doing their improvements on yes. the intersections, we can save some money by having ours already designed. Yes. But at the same time, we may have designs that we'll never use, and we have spent that money. My thinking is is that we may be inconvenienced mm -hmm. for a, a short period of time, and then at that time we can redesign or we can design what it is we need to accomplish and address those issues, because there may be intersections. Example: uh, Aviation Boulevard. Mm -hmm may not need a quiet zone design because of its location. But I'm still not, you know, that quarter mile, and I know that I've seen in the federal uh, reg, uh, railroad uh, information, that one quarter mile and the one short, too long, whatever that the number is that they go through, I, I, I guess I just still can't, I, I don't know what the impact will be. The fact of the matter is, if we have... Uh, a minute and 30 seconds worth of noise that happens 16 times a day mm -hmm. and it doesn't happen after 10 o'clock at night, is that worth $3 million? And well, I think that's sort of the where I would try to place evaluation on Mr. Starling? A yeah. couple, couple comments. I think um, with, what's the cost of sending out an RFP? versus the cost of hiring? There, there is no cost associated with that except the engineering firms. We have to have a good faith that when we put the RFP out, we're going to hire someone. I would not recommend that we just put an RFP out because then you start, the next time you get responses, the prices are going to be extremely high because it costs them money to put those together. Right, and I, I can appreciate that. But I, but I also want to say it's not 16. It's 32 additional trains. It's every half hour plus the freights, and the freights, if we do have the quiet zone, the freights presumably would not have to blow their horns either, Mr. Zeck. That's that is correct. correct. So, um, but I, I also agree that we need to make the decision, should we do a quiet zone? Is this going to be an inconvenience? And, and I think that, um, you know, I would like to um, do, do a little bit more work or action, um, with respect to the businesses of Main Street and see what what their thoughts are with respect to the noise versus the safety issues. Um, and so I don't know that we, I think, Would you, I don't think we're ready. Okay. I mean, I understand the impetus to get this in place because we are under time constraints. Right. But no. I would like to get a um, okay. decision I, as to what we want to do and, first. And, you know, and uh, Rusty, from the... Uh, railroads plan. I, I I would like to see a business model that shows how this is working. And, and I'm not I'm not from New York, but I know there's a whole lot of people that live in New York, and those trains up there are subsidized on a regular basis. We're going to come down here and run people <coughs> between Orlando and, and Miami, and and the, that business model and that and I'm sure there's been considerable study done on that in order to do the ridership. And I've seen some general numbers in conversation, but I I, I just think we need to sort of look at that. And before we spend money, we need to be absolutely convinced there's going to be 32 trains running through the city of Vero Beach, I, I, and uh, you know, it, it's just one of those things that have, have come up, and it may be, and if the 32 trains run for, you know, six months or something, then and it goes down to 12 trains, then it's a different different issue. So, I, and I, I guess that's what I'm thinking. I, I believe that the commission needs to be prepared, and we need to have our ducks in a row and understand where this train business is going to go and be prepared to respond to it. But if we could just, you know, that risk analysis, is it better to put your money up front or is it better to try to resolve? And, and I, you know, typically speaking, I try to pre-plan, but uh, a reactionary in this particular case may be the safest way of, 
uh, proceeding. That's Chairman, just a comment. Ahead. Yes, I, I have another question for Mr. Roberts. You mentioned well, that. Bef before uh, the city manager leaves the podium, could I just uh, quick say, I know that you understood what I said, but I also know and, and should know better than to make sarcastic comments because the public hears Brian Hetty said the city manager was getting all kinds of things from the county, uh, the city manager being for the city, not personally. And uh, we know that's not true. They hold your feet to the fire. They make you pay for everything. You know I was being sarcastic. I know it, but uh, my apologies for that. I shouldn't have done that because the public takes what you say literally. Anyway, that was it. Yes, Sorry. Sir. Not a problem on my part. I, I got the message. But before he comes up, where's that? You were asking about what the county is uh, doing on quiet zones. Yes. And this came up in a regional planning council uh, discussion. And uh, they talked about the cost of quiet zones. They even came up with a new number. For 39 uh, crossings, they came up with $5 million. I think it was Palm Beach County. They have, I forget how many crossings they have down there. It was $114 million. So everybody's got a number. And it... So it reminds me of the spreadsheets that fall around in Vero Beach all the time. But the, the bottom line is, in the minutes from this, it says the Indian River County Commission is waiting for all aboard Florida engineers to finish the survey of the routes crossings to see what would be needed. North of 45th Street, there are very few residents near the crossings. We probably don't want to spend the money on quiet zones in that area, Chairman Peter O'Brien. But around Fourth Street and Oslo Road, so they're still they are looking at quiet zones as the bottom line to that. And we had a meeting uh, with the uh, county administrator as well as Mr. O'Brien on Friday, and it came up in general nature. and And they're sort of trying to take a wait and see view of this as well from the county's perspective to see how they're going to have to address it. But they're also addressing it on the regional planning council, which may be a good forum to try to, if we want to try to get state money, you got to remember that's the Palm Beach County and Martin County and a whole lot of other folks besides Indian River County, and that could be a good forum to try to move toward uh, trying to find funding for this this project if we really need it. Okay, Mr. Roberts. I, I had uh, another question. You mentioned about the, um, um, the safety plan that's being worked on that would determine... Um, fencing. Uh, you mentioned this when we were talking about the fencing issue. So do you have an idea when the report is going to be ready to go? Or did I misunderstand that no, all the board is working with the federal government right now and others on a safety plan? Florida DOT and the Federal Railroad Administration. Um, I don't know exactly when we're going to be finished with that and when, when I could come to you and say, okay, this is where we're going to put fencing, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can find, give you a kind of an idea, I think, ballpark. I think this. it would help us to figure yeah. out what the next steps are for us as a community. Some of that, some of that is a part of the EIS process. Through we're we're, we're looking at uh, what factors there um, that are required, what projects, what safety measures, what mitigation measures that are required. That's all part of the process. So I think we have a few months on that one, but I'll get a better answer. I mean, while you're here, Mr. <clears throat> Roberts, um, we heard from our city manager. He made some um, good points. Let me ask you this, because, again, back to your memo that you sent uh, the city manager. Are you prepared at this time to tell us when our window of opportunity will close, meaning, like, let's say this moves forward, uh, the city would like to take a look at the quiet zones, We're going to have to look at costs, and as was mentioned a few meetings ago, uh, if the city of Vero Beach elects to do the quiet zones, it would be a lot less money if we dovetail off the construction with you people coming through. So my question to you is, when? what's the window of opportunity? When is it going to shut on us? My answer to that, Mr. Chairman, is what I think I need to do is put uh, Mr. O'Connor in direct touch with some of the planning folks uh, on our team that are working on this the day-to-day -day basis. And I think if they have those conversations together, I think uh, the city manager will have a, um, a clearer picture on, uh, on where we're going and where okay. we are. And so um, I think that will help the city greatly. 
Are we safe with this time frame? Our next meeting is February 26, okay? 2014. Uh, are we still within the safe zone there? Yes, uh, sir. <laughs> and then we'll need another couple of weeks for the city council yeah. to get yes, a hold sir. of it. Sure you So, are. Mr. City Manager, got a question for you real quick. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Are you okay with doing that, staying in the loop with Mr. Roberts, and then I can contact you to get the info and all? Oh, absolutely. And any written documentation I receive from them, I will pass on to you as members of the Railroad Commission. And okay. it would be, but you know, in uh, talking about the engineering firm, if we could, if the county determines that they're going to have sections that are going to be quiet zones or anyone else, Sebastian or anyone else, it would really be better if you had the economy of scale of an engineer that would design Understood. everything up and down. So we, we, again, trying to pull people together in this effort. Right, and I think what I'll be looking uh, uh, to you for is as this rolls on out, if we do decide to do the quiet zones and, and you feel we should move forward on this, uh, I'm going to also ask, you know, to get a recommendation from you for an engineering firm where you can come before this commission and give us a, your thoughts on an engineering firm that you feel comfortable with. Okay. That. Now, with that being said, <coughs> I'm going to withdraw my motion and put it on hold for the time being. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Go ahead. Sorry. Also, uh, I may not come to you with a recommendation of a particular engineering firm, but I'll come to you with particulars of what would be in an RFP that would qualify certain firms and disqualify those who have no experience. And that that's fine. Be. We'll go with your recommendations. Yeah. Um, while the manager, city manager, is here with us, um, have you heard from, uh, has there been an outcry to your office? Um, I know we've heard from one or two residents, um, but... Has there been what? Are, what is your office hearing from the residents in general? Because I know it just isn't um, those businesses that are on Main Street or along the railway. The you know people all over the community hear the whistles. So, what is your office hearing? We we get very few calls on it, uh, and I think it's because there's a state of confusion as to what to really expect on this. That, that, I think that's the real challenge. And I think there are a lot of people, you know, you got to remember, we just started talking about quiet zones and trains running at 100 miles an hour, what, three months ago or something. It hadn't even been that long. And and the, the average citizen, you know, their first reaction is don't spend any money, but the second reaction is, is let me figure out what's going on. And, and uh, Penny, to be very honest with you, I, I think it's still in the minds, uh, in the conversations we have with people. Uh, but we still get complaints about the freight trains at 2.30 in the morning as uh, expressed by one of our residents. And, and that's sort of one of those things that has been a constant. I, I cannot recall anyone calling saying we need to have quiet zones because trains are going to be doing 100 miles an hour. I have had conversation where people mm -hmm. talked about putting fencing. Mm -hmm. it, not for the city manager, but Mr. Roberts. I Thank you, Mr. City if, Manager. I, I, don't, I think well, just one thing, uh, city manager. Um, there was a request uh, for some financial information, uh, which was rejected. One of the things that that you said you're going to ask for, and I would like to to uh, ask that you that you make sure you use whatever power your office has for a business model. It seems to me that that would include some financial information, and I think that's kind of what the uh, the citizen was looking for. Certainly, what I was looking for um, that we need to see some sort of business model on this thing. We're kind of operating in the dark. The All Aboard Florida says they're a private corporation and don't share anything with us. Well, I, I think maybe that's not exactly correct, that technically they might not be legally required to share things with us, but I think that if they want help with the communities up and down, and we're hearing numbers of one county at $114 million of state money, that's our money. It's all our money. So if they're looking for a couple hundred, 300 million tax dollars to be spent on their quiet zones or safety zones or engineering of any way, I think that we should see a business model sooner, not later. And I'm sure the business model is not what's areas of, of major concern. I understand about corporations not releasing publicly all of their financial, but... Uh, Rusty, I guess you hear the, the message. 
Mr. Moron, go right ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was actually just going to inquire, Mr. Roberts. It, it struck me as last time he was here, he advised us that he was actually going to go and hear from the city of Sebastian. And as a fellow, as another community here in the Nerve County, I was interested to hear how that meeting went and your impressions, at least that you could share if there are any at all that happened. I uh, made a presentation uh, similar to the presentation I've made to this, uh, the city commission and this commission to the uh, city commission uh, for uh, Sebastian uh, a few weeks ago. And um, uh, it went very well. We, I've, I received a lot of supportive comments from members of the commission. Uh, questions, the same questions I'm getting here is how often will the train be operating, uh, what are the hours, um, but uh, I, uh, I probably had a question or two about uh, noise, but it didn't seem to be um, a major concern at the time that I met with them. It was fairly positive, very excited about the project. The, the main question they asked was, when do we get a stop? So. <laughs> That's the first question I get at wherever I go. When do we get a stop? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Roberts, one of the things, too, that uh, we asked for, and uh, you were going to do some uh, research for us, the train is going to leave at uh, 6 o'clock in Orlando and at 6 o'clock in Miami. That's going to have them cross at some point between Orlando and Miami. Uh, do you know where that cross? You didn't get that information for no, us? No, but I'll, Can you? Uh, I'll write it down and I'll ask. I'll ask, yeah. Yeah. Because it somewhat would make a difference if Vero Beach were the were the exact middle, then you would be getting once an hour, right? Not every <clears throat> half hour, right? Or two blows with Mr. Stratton, yeah. yeah. or or within a ten minute, yeah. Mr. Roberts, yes, I sir. Have, um, a couple things for you. I was a little um, surprised. And I actually didn't believe it when you said you weren't going to bring some financial information up uh, back uh, for uh, the citizens. You are a publicly traded corporation, FEC is, and I don't— No, sir. You're not publicly traded? No, sir. Oh, then I apologize. We were until 2007. Okay. Okay. Well, then that, changed, that changes my objection. Okay. Um, the, um, <laughs> the other thing that—now um, I have to— th uh, re refocus here. Um, with respect to the engineering that needs to be done in the quiet zones, my understanding is, and and this is, I'm sure, a very limited, a very simplified understanding that, that an engineer would cringe at, um, but that you're going to put the gate crossings on the side of the um, road where traffic's approaching it in order to make it a quiet zone designation, we basically need to mirror that on the other side? Is, is that just a rough? That's exactly correct. Usually there's four gates instead of two. Okay. Um, so then the cost of the mirror side should be approximately the same as the cost of the side that you're going to do? I think I know where you're going. <laughs> um, okay. The, uh, um, could, we, could you give us an idea <laughs> on what the cost of what you're going to do is going to be? Um, for our intersections, and then that would give us a working number, um, and then perhaps uh, we'll, maybe you're, the firm that's going to do this could tell us or give you an idea of what the savings would be if we hired them to do it at the same time rather than hiring someone else to do it. Um, and, the, um, and related to that, is this something that needs to be done at the same time, if, if, if we decide at this point in time to not have a quiet zone, could we then come back in a year or two years and we decide, oh, gosh, we need, we need it to be a quiet zone, could we then do the other side of the road? Yes, you can do it uh, uh, later. It probably uh, it might change the cost. I don't know. I, I'm certain it would change the cost. So the city of Winter Park, as an example, uh, uh, in or Orange County, just uh, – there was an article in the paper the other day just voted to go ahead and, and move forward with quiet zone studies uh, for the Sun Rail, which is the commuter rail in Central Florida. That train will be operating in a couple of months. Uh, what the city of Winter Park has decided to do will, will take a year for them to get through that process. Okay. Thank you very much. In your news articles, I have that about Winter Park, so you'll be getting that today. I think it's actually attached, Mr. Chairman, I think it's okay. actually attached I to have the, the email. Okay. <coughs> 
Anyone else with comments? Well, I, I just want to say to Mr. Stradley, the, the fact that they're not publicly trading anymore it doesn't really change your objection. It just changes the chances that you'll ever that, get an answer. That's right. I was just going to ask him to bring the, the SEC filings and the um, financial statements, but that they don't have to do that. Right. They, they don't do that. So. If it's okay with the commission, we have uh, a member of the public, Mr. Mark Mucha, would like to address that again. Is it okay that he comes up? Oh, always okay. If a citizen wants to speak, right. there are bosses. Come, come right up, sir. Uh, Mark Mutcher again. When I heard the uh, motion in the second, I was going to get up here and say that it seems like none of you heard a word I said. But uh, then I heard Mr. Uh, O'Connor, city manager, and it, he heard a word I said, or else I'll give him the benefit of the doubt and, and say that he had the same thoughts. Um, but then, so my, my reason for speaking has kind of shifted a little bit as to what's gone on since then. Um, it sounds like we're going to spend somewhere between zero and three million dollars. And uh, assuming the amount's not zero, I guess I'd like to ask the city manager, where would this money come from, however much it is? Whether it's for studies or construction or all of the above. And whether it's now or three years from now. It would have to come out of Public Works on the uh, street resurfacing projects. Um, and so right now we're running behind by about uh, four years on our street projects, but this would be about the only place I know of you could justify bringing any money out to, because you're in essence studying uh, the street project and it would be a street related project. The short answer is it would come out of uh, ad valorem tax. It would come out of the tax that, that funds the city from whatever source. Oh, absolutely. Yes, sir. The residents, of the, city, the, the residents of the city of Vero Beach would be paying. There you go. Ms. Chandler? If I could, I believe that a motion and a second only gives us as a commission the opportunity to talk about that item. doesn't mean that we've made a vote. It means that there's been a motion and a second. Mr. Eddy or Mr. Cafanti? Well, we, we, we would have to take a vote when there's a motion in a second yes. or someone withdraw the motion. That's right. But it didn't mean we didn't pay attention to a resident's Got concerns. It. Mr. Cafanti, go right ahead. Thank you very much for your generous generosity. <clears throat> I kind of missed what's going to be done about what actually specifically is going to be done to be able to have a quiet zone. Did, would you repeat what you said? Uh, something about extra set of ga gates, is that what you're talking about? Well, I'm, as I understand it, um, gates, right now, if you if you approach an intersection, there are gates on one side of the intersection. Um, hmm. The Just in the, for oncoming traffic. And, I didn't realize that. Well, the gates... I believe you. The, the gates come down like this, yeah. but they're going to come down like this, and like that, if that makes any sense, and uh, there will be one on each side of the of the road, each side of the. I thought there were gates. If this, if these are the tracks, the gates are here, and there's a set on the other side. That's not no, true. No, that's not true. There's there's one on. If you think of Highway 60 westbound, here. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's 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 a bad example because it's a one-way road. But if you take. That's a good example. Because they're only the the gates are only from the direction of the traffic. Okay, gates are only from the direction. I'm of the used traffic. to the ones up north, and they're on both sides of the road. By yeah, the way. they're they're only yeah. on, they only block okay. oncoming traffic. So if, if okay. you're on the other side of the road, and that's why people can zip you through can, and they can right. zigzag through the okay. Intersections. Now, how is like, uh, there's rhetorical question, something that you think about, and I'll try I try to be brief here, uh, and I respect your time. Uh, the the um, how is this going to protect the pedestrians that have been or that possibly will be on the tracks and they won't hear the train coming? The, the, if, if you, I think you ought to look and find out how many deaths, that's the bottom line maybe, if, I, if you will, how many deaths occurred at the intersections in Indian River County 
on a, ro on a road, on a crossover, as opposed to all the deaths that occurred along the track someplace. And to have this quiet zone is, is not going to help these potential people out who are going to die being, by being hit by a train. <clears throat> I want to know, the, the, you're talking about, just two more seconds, please. Thank you. Uh, I want to know, the, the, the cost is $3 million if we do it now. What is the cost uh, if we do it two years from now when, when we find out or somebody decides that these whistles are un, unbearable? So I wish, I, I haven't heard a number, and I'd like to hear well, that. Mr. Gafani, uh, um, first of all, I think we, we did hear your <coughs> <concern. coughs> the, I don't. <coughs> the pedestrians. We, we talked a lot about that, and that's where, kind of where we're going with the fencing, and, and I certainly heard that, and I certainly brought that up. Um, and secondly, we just, I just asked about the cost of the railroad's cost and if there would be a discount if we were to do it with the railroad, if their engineer could maybe give us a feel for what the discount would be. Um, so, and what I'm trying to do is back into that number, just an estimate, because we, we won't know the number until we issue the contract. Well, but if, but if we know what the discount would be today if we did it, alongside the railroad, then we could certainly just subtract the discount from that number and, again, have a, a reasonable estimate, um, probably low, the long, further off in the future, the more expensive it would be. Well, it's, um, my, it's my understanding that the $3 million is, is if we did it when... I, I think that we well, spent too much... the gentleman much, is here, so maybe I, he could answer that question. I think uh, we put too much credence in a $3 million figure. Well, um, where did it come from? I'm not I didn't really make sure. it up. Um, I'm not really sure, and that's why. I've, could, that's why could I just. You ask Mr. Roberts. I think his name. That's is, why I just asked him if he could. Um, just when he was up before, I asked him if he would give us an, what their estimate of their half or, or their their work on our intersections would be, and then we could take that number and make reasonable projections. And that's all we're going to get until we have an engineering firm study it is okay. reasonable projections. You and I aren't in the railroad business, but this gentleman apparently is. And I would think that the business that you're in, whatever it is, that you could have some idea of what whatever you do costs. Yes, sir. And a Mr. ballpark. Would you, would, I'm not going to argue with you. Would I would you like, like this gentleman again? to come up and address that issue. What does, What is the cost going to be? What does he think it's going to be if we do it now? And what will it cost extra? How much will it cost extra if we do it two years from now? Neglecting inflation and other trivial things. I, I, and I would you like, and I would like you understand. Let's before, and then I'll, okay. I'll leave here. I just want. Thank you. I'd like to know when. No, I thank you. I'd like to know when this project became an idea in somebody's mind. How long have these people been thinking about this, that our backs are against the wall, supposedly, all of a sudden there's a big rush to make a major decision, which the city manager just indicated that we're not doing too well financially if we're four years behind what he wants to do with the roads. So our backs, are, pardon me, but our backs are now against the wall, so to speak, because these people all of a sudden sprung this on us three months ago. I didn't think it was that long. And how long have they been considering this? Considering this, this is a major project, and I'm sure that they didn't decide this three months months ago uh, before they fell off a bar stool. They must have been thinking about this seriously for some time. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Yes, Mr. Cafanti. Sir, step up. I just have. Go right ahead. State your name and address again, please, for the record. John Chapman, 2356 18th Avenue, Vero Beach. I just have a little information for you that you may be able to uh, research very quickly. Um, for quite a while, the speed limit in Vero Beach for trains is 35 miles an hour. That's been an ordinance in, in city of Vero Beach for a long, long time. I don't know exactly when it was put in, but I did see <coughs> it when I was going through the ordinance book. I just want to let you be aware of that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Roberts, did you want to fill in a couple of those blanks right quick, or would you rather wait? Well, I, 
appreciate the gentleman's concern. Uh, he's missed a couple of meetings where some of these have been discussed. But the project was announced in March 2012. Uh, and uh, we have been, uh, since March 2012 announcement, we've been, we've been planning the project. Uh, so it's not something that's come up in, in, the, in the past past three months. Okay, thank you, Mr. Roberts. Just uh, go ahead. P perhaps to answer Buzzy's question, too. Uh, at the last meeting, the police chief got up, uh, if you recall, and made a report about the number of incidents. And in the minutes, it, it makes mention of the fact that there have been six such incidents and only one has involved a vehicle. Mr. City Manager, okay, right ahead. Also, just for clarification, the Federal Energy or Federal Railroad Administration uh, overrules any local ordinances. Uh, I, one of my little historical events is that we passed an ordinance, happened to be in Mulberry, Florida, for the speed of trains. We sent a police officer out there. We sent a citation to the uh, train master, uh, and after about the 70th, he called me up and he says, you are wasting paper and time. And so it, many of these are superseded by the rules and regulations on a federal level. Ours is a very limited. Uh, they keep reminding you the railroads were here first. Yes, and historically, I believe it's actually the Commerce Clause in the Constitution that oh, finds that basis. But okay. Yes, thank you, Mr. Yeah, on, on quiet zones, uh, one of the things I'd like to do for the next meeting is what does a quiet zone actually look like? when the gates come down. You know, it's been explained to me, and I'm going to have uh, what try to find some drawings of how it looks when the gates come down, because the idea when the gates come down on both sides, they come down so cars or pedestrians cannot get around and be, the pedestrian would have to actually jump over, I think, the rail. The next thing, uh, the quiet zones, not everything is quiet there. The, the bells and all that you hear on those little crossing arms with the red lights, they still go on and go back and forth. The bells go off. If anyone's traveled to Europe, uh, they have high-speed trains. Uh, there's no sounding of their horns. The gates come down. Uh, when I was stationed over there, they had chains underneath the gates when they came down. Uh, the, the bells would go off, the lights, and then the train would whiz on by. Then the gates would go back up. So they, they had quiet zones there many, many years ago. So I'm going to bring back some information on what they look like so people can see. And any other concerns here concerning what we're talking about right now? Because we'll move on to the next. Okay, moving on to the next. Under members' matters, we have a discussion of the cold shoulder requested by Mr. Brian Heading. Go ahead, Mr. Heading. <coughs> Uh, um, be before I get to a cold shoulder, the uh, former president is visiting uh, Vero Beach today, and uh, I, I don't know whether he's tuned into uh, to city meetings. He might be. He might be too busy for that. But uh, maybe he'll watch the city council meeting tomorrow morning. But uh, anyway, it's reminiscent of. of, of I, I grew up in a town where the presidents and former presidents and current presidents used to visit. But anyway, welcome to town, Mr. President. And uh, I hope you enjoy. Um, part of my difficulty in serving on this commission has been uh, a mix of answers. And one of the things that I know for myself, I need to know the truth. And I need to know the truth the first time. I see Monty sitting out here. Monty uh, uh, served as uh, city manager when uh, when I served on the city council. And um, Monty, I think, will tell you that he and I had a, uh, had a very good working relationship. We agreed to tell each other the truth the first time, and, uh, and that worked pretty well for us. And, uh, and he's shaking his head yes. And uh, when uh, I, I think that looking back, I know that there were a few times that uh, the city manager decided that uh, uh, he just wouldn't tell all of the truth to Mr. Hetty. Mr. Hetty's probably better off not knowing a couple of things. And, uh, and uh, if, if I didn't ask the right questions, I, I didn't get the answers. But when he gave me an answer, it was truthful. And um, 
and uh, the city clerk sitting down there will tell you that she's known me for 20 years and she knows that I have a pretty good memory and when something doesn't line up, I get concerned. And some of the information that we're getting here has been contradictory and, um, and that's, that's a problem for me. Um, I think that maybe through the due diligence of this council, we're getting some answers that are, that are really for the record. For an example, the, the speed. Um, in, I think it was the first meeting. Was, well, they're not really going to be doing 110 through, through downtown. It's going to be less than that. And now we're hearing that, well, actually, to Vero Beach, yeah, 110 is going to be what it is. And if it's going to be 110 miles an hour through Vero Beach, then that certainly reduces the time frame that, that the trains will actually be in Vero Beach, which I think is a, a significant bit of information that, that we need to know. Um, the, um, without any financial information, that raises just huge red flags for me. Um, um, and when actually when I started talking about some of these red flags, the mayor at a, at a city council meeting, the mayor turned off the, uh, the microphone so the public couldn't hear what I had to say. But um, these red flags should be aired and the public's concerns should be answered. And I think that we need the information. I know that... Scott, you got an answer on the uh, on the financial information, which, in terms of legal requirements, uh, they're they're going to do what their legal requirements are. But I think that if you've got a a, a privately held corporation that's coming to uh, municipalities up and down the coast, that is going to cost upwards of the whole all of the counties what three hundred million dollars, and it, it, state money is our money. It's all our money. The state is not going to give them anything that they don't take from us first. And I think it's a reasonable request. Whether they have a legal obligation to give us this information is, is, a, is I, a legal I agree, question. I I would like to see the business plan, certainly, but at, the, at least that much. We, I think, should get something before we invest any taxpayer money at all. And, uh, and I appreciate city managers... Uh, attitude that, uh, gee, so we're going to do this in this engineering study. Let's hold off just a little bit before we spend tax dollars. Uh, I, I appreciate that. Um, but um, anyway, um, the um, the railroad, though, I, I, I do think that they have legal rights, and I don't think that the city um, should do anything to step on the legal rights that they that they have. Um, there's a citizen I see out here who talked to me before the meeting. She said that, uh, that she had legal rights, too. She had property rights. And that running the railroad down through and disturbing her property rights is a problem. And that's something that this commission uh, should take into consideration. And I would agree with her <coughs> that she has property rights. And I think that some of the questions about the noise, we, we do have noise ordinances. Um, maybe the city managers answered that the, the federal rules for the horns override our local noise ordinance. And I'm getting a yes to the head shake that I guess our noise ordinances then don't mean anything. So that's not going to be helpful to us. Um, you know... Um, Many people are aware that uh, that I've written a couple of books and uh, that involve Vero Beach, and uh, my 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 newest one is called Crazy Train, and I'll bet you you can guess what it's going to be about. Um, anyway, um, the commission, this commission, made a recommendation. It was a four to one vote. I was the no vote that the city council. Um, join 
in the other counties and asking for state money. And I would just ask that this commission um, think about reconsidering that. I know the city council already took action. There's a council member here. Uh, former Mayor Jay Kramer is here. But for the city to join in with other communities asking for state money gives credence, it gives uh, credibility to this whole project when we haven't seen one ounce of financial data. I, I know that typically on the city council, uh, council member, former Mayor Turner, um, she requests a mountain of financial information before she approves expenditure of, of our tax dollars. And in this example, no requirement for any financial data or uh, business model or anything like that has been uh, has provided. And uh, I, I think that that's a problem. And un until we get some something from All Aboard Florida <clears throat> that, that shows us some financial information about how this is going to work, if it's going to work, <coughs> whether it's going to last more than 30 days, then I think that the uh, the report I wrote about uh, about a cold shoulder to uh, to this whole pr proposal is something that we really need to consider. That we shouldn't be spending tax dollars on the crazy train until we know that the crazy train isn't as crazy as it sounds, and that it really will. Uh, it really is something that really is going to happen. And um, if this is just step one, there's a lady that spoke that has since left, but is if this is just step one to the expansion of the railroad, which would include tri-rail and include uh, uh, a lot of trains up and down through the city, I don't know if there's anything at all that this city can do to stop that or should do to stop that. But I think that there is an obligation for the, uh, all of the facts to be presented, including things they might have you know, for the future. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Hetty. And just so folks know, um, I've attended some get-togethers and all, and people on both, both sides of the tracks. I live on the west sides of the tracks, and I have friends on the east side of the tracks. Uh, they are concerned uh, with the high-speed rail. They're also concerned... Uh, with the other things that they read about, about adding more freight trains. Uh, they, again, uh, Mr. Hetty made reference to a lady that spoke about other trains that may come through. They are going to put a, a second track here through the city of Vero Beach. Our people are wondering on the west side, how are we going to get to the hospitals? You know, some of the trains are quite long, the freight trains, people have those concerns. Also, you know, back to the train horns, you know, are they going to lean on it from the time that they come into the county and they leave? That happens a couple of times a day. It may happen more. We have the business community, uh, and Mr. Stradley even brought that up. We need to hear a little bit more from them with the downtown businesses. How are they concerned about the impacts? Now, with all that being said, uh, we still have to be, uh, this commission has to make a recommendation to the city council here. We are working on the time frames. We heard that today. I pulled back on my motion after we got a little bit more information uh, from the city manager. And that's the purpose of these meetings. We have to do things out in the open. We have to have our discussions so we can make some wise and prudent decisions. So again, going back to the window of time, uh, city manager is aware of that. I know the that we have a council member in the back. They're aware of it. We're working under tight time frames. Uh, we did dovetail uh, with a resolution to work along with other cities. Again, back to what I said at the beginning, I think it was at the beginning of the meeting. You have to be ready to go. State's not going to issue any dollars to you if you don't have a plan and if there's not a need. But if you're not ready to go and you have all your paperwork done and in order, you lose out. And then it's really on the backs of us here in Vero. If we do get a lot of complaints for our citizens and it starts shutting down our co commerce and it has a negative effect on our businesses and our homeowners then we got some serious problems. So I'm glad that all the commission members up here, uh, they're putting their backs to this, they're bringing good things to the table, and we need 
to, to take a look at uh, the issues that some of the general public members brought up. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. I meant to, to uh, tell you this when you were talking about it. My apologies. But the uh, you wanted to know what uh, the gates would actually look yes. like. And um, there's an application here. It's called a stop gate. And uh, it's used in, uh, in whistle band zones. And when the gate comes down, it locks on both sides of the. I'll give this to Tammy so she can Thank give it you. to you. But it locks down in on both sides of of the road. It locks in, and uh, there's a uh, there's a photograph of a of a truck trying to crash through it, and uh, it, it doesn't allow penetration. I'm sure it you know a, a semi at high speed might break through it, but certainly. Uh, so I'll, uh, I'll give this to Tammy so she can give you a copy if you thank don't already have it. Right. Thank, thank you. And with that being said, don't forget I have a packet of information. If you all just don't mind waiting just a tad, uh, uh, Ms. Vock will get you all the information. Next meeting dates February 26, 2014 at 4 p.m. March 10, 2014 at 4 p.m. I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Go before right I make that motion to adjourn, may, can I ask that this information and Mr. Hetty's information be distributed in next month's agenda just for the public? Oh, most definitely. All right, thank you very much. Then, most definitely. then I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in Second. favor? Aye. Thank you. Um,